And we've all mm-hmm. been there. There's not mm-hmm. a single person on earth who hasn't had that day where they go, I do not want to go to the gym right now. And so some days in my head, I'll sit there and tell myself on, on the days where I don't want to go, you're going to be a failure if you don't go. And I know that same seems kind of weird. And she tells me I'm weird all the time for this, but in my head, that's what motivates me. And I think, okay, mm-hmm. I am able to go do this. But to your point, Candy, on her side, if I was ever like, Bryn, if you don't go to the gym, you're going to miss out on your goals and you're going to fail the day. She would get completely upset with me and think I was saying the rudest thing on earth. <laughs> so I think I think the the balance there is figure out who you're talking to. If you're sharing this message mm-hmm. with somebody else or if it's in your personal life, figure out actually what gets you to go drive the car, mm-hmm. to go drive whatever life effort you're in. Figure out what motivates right. you to get going. Welcome to Biz Help For You, the show that saves you the expensive learning curve by providing advice from industry experts in every facet of the entrepreneurial journey. Too many small businesses collapse. According to the U.S. Census Bureau, 20% fail within their first year and less than 35% make it to their 10th anniversary. The goal of this podcast is to change that statistic. So if you're interested in learning more to be a successful entrepreneur, tune in today. Let me tell you a little bit about my guest today. Brandon Davis, an entrepreneur driven by the desire to improve lives, discovered his passion for business at a young age while watching Shark Tank. Despite his youth, Brandon has successfully developed three businesses, Hoover Davis Landscaping, U County Christmas Lights, and Get Over Yourself LLC, and is now fully dedicated to his tech startup, Interval. Along his entrepreneurial journey, he observed the prevalence of self-limiting beliefs hindering others from pursuing their dreams. Brandon has made it his mission to empower those around him, spreading the message of get over yourself. His diverse experiences, including leading a sales team to generate $3 million in revenue in just four months, make him an engaging and relatable guest for both younger and older audiences. Brandon's story serves as a valuable lesson for you, emphasizing the importance of overcoming fears and self-imposed limitations to achieve success in the business world. So, Brandon, welcome to the show. Hey, thank you. I appreciate that. Well, I have some questions that I'm ready to ask you on the topic for today. But before I get into those questions, I'd love for you just to share a little bit more about your story and how you became an entrepreneur. Yeah, you kind of alluded to it. Um, Back when I was younger, I had the most amazing parents. I know a lot of times on podcasts, you don't generally hear people talking about how great their childhood was, but I'm hopefully going to break that mold. And I think sometimes... And I I hope this resonates with somebody out there. Sometimes we think we always have to be the victim in a story. We have to come Mm -hmm. from the trenches. And everyone goes through their own things inside of their lives. Everyone goes through different hardships. But to be completely candid with everyone out there, when I was growing up, I had amazing parents. Still very close with them today. And I am grateful for everything they taught me. One of those things that they instilled in me was from my father. He was an incredibly hard worker who always made time for his family. And so he'd work the typical schedule. He'd get home around 6 or 7 p.m. We'd all eat dinner together as a family. Oftentimes, he'd still have work to get done, but he'd make sure he'd still spend time with me and my siblings and obviously my mom, who was his wife. And one thing that he would kind of do with me is like a bonding experience. Even even if he still had some work to get done, he'd sit down on the couch with his laptop. He'd start clicking away, and we'd turn on ABC Shark Tank together. And for whatever reason, I don't think he was ever trying to inspire me or anything. We just liked watching people make some fun deals and see some cool products online. But that sense of being able to see somebody create something that was benefiting the world, just it it amazed me. And that's kind of what I wanted to do with my life. And so I frameworked everything off of that sense. Well, I always enjoy hearing the stories of how someone became an entrepreneur, and I agree that not everyone has like sad stories. It's great to have the encouragement of our family and having your dad having shown you Shark Tank and inspiring you, whether he knew it or not, to become an entrepreneur is a fun story. So thank you for sharing that. Yeah, of course. So I want to get into the topic then of get over yourself. I know you have experience uh, from your own journey that you've had to say, I need to get over myself, right? So can you actually tell our listeners, first of all, 
What do you mean by that? I mean, it seems kind of obvious, right? Get over ourselves. But for you, what is it that you want to get across using that phrase? And how do you use that to overcome your self-limitations or fears? Mm -hmm. Beautiful question. I appreciate the framework there. So get over yourself. It started off as actually a joke when I was a lot younger. Um, back when I was in sixth grade, there's a lot of issues that people in middle school have that in the grand scheme of things aren't actually issues at all. So I remember mm -hmm. I was talking to some of my friends, and if you can picture this with me, everyone who's listening out there today, what do middle schoolers usually have to worry about? It's if they got a good grade on the test. It's whether or not their crush likes them back. It's <laughs> um, if they're going to play good in their sporting event that night. Like there's very few things for the most part that a, that a sixth grader or anyone in middle school actually has to worry about a ton. So I remember just as kind of annoy an annoyance to uh, get after my friends a little bit when they would fail that test, when, when they would do bad in their sporting event, um, they would always be so sad and they would always be kind of lulled down by whatever experience hit them. And so just as kind of a one liner, I'd always tell them, eh, you're fine, get over yourself. And so it wasn't until years later when this joke started off as something a lot more powerful. When I realized like, okay, I could set this aside and I can use it for my actual own mindset and treat everything in my life as a learning experience rather than a difficulty. And that's not to say that they that life isn't difficult. It is for everybody in their own ways. And so when I sat back and said, okay, whatever life throws at me, whatever God wants me to learn today, I'm going to sit back and I'm going to tell myself it's okay. Whatever you're going mm -hmm. through is going to, you're going to be able to get through it. You just need to get over yourself. And since mm -hmm. changing that mindset instead of my head, I've been able to see extraordinary efforts change inside of my life from just daily discipline to the way I'm able to treat other people. Um, and I always joke about this one. It's, it's nothing grand scheme. It's very small scale, but um, one of my big things that I deal with day in and day out, I get very frustrated when I'm driving on the road and somebody cuts me off. And I think mm -hmm. everyone can relate to that. You, everyone hates those pesky drivers and heck we're, we're those pesky drivers half the time. And so one of my biggest things that I have to tell myself every day is, Hey, when I get cut off in traffic, or somebody needs to change lanes when they probably shouldn't or whatever, maybe relax. This is not a concern you should be having. We have too much going on inside of our minds, inside of our lives that will cause us stress, that will cause us um, hardship. This is the least of my worries right now. I need to get over myself. So once again, very basic example, but if you could start shifting your mindset to say like, no matter what life throws at me, no matter what God has in store for me, I'll be able to get through it. Then honestly, the sky's the limit. And that's exactly what mm -hmm. I've done in business. And that's exactly what I'll continue to do in my marriage and my relationships with friends, coworkers, everything like that. It's how I'll live my life. Mm -hmm. But some people might be listening and saying, okay, I get it. Like the traffic, that's not a huge life issue, you know, nope. or grades, even though a lot of times we might be told, you know, we have to get good grades. So we're going to be successful and things like that too. Right. In the long run, one, you know, failed test or something probably isn't going to be that big of a deal, but we'll have some people who mm -hmm. are saying like, you know, well, I don't believe that I can be as successful as I want, or I have the fear of, you know, whatever that is. So, and it's something that's deeply ingrained. It could be something from the time they were a child that they were raised in. So how can you, you know, help them realize that there are ways to get over those limiting beliefs? And it might be difficult, but those beliefs don't necessarily have to be true. You know, um, I'm going to quote or paraphrase some David Goggins here for a second. Um, for anyone out there who's a fan, my wife absolutely hates him. I love him just for certain things. Um, so take this for what it's worth. But um, one thing that my wife and I agree on that he talks about that is actually life changing is the fact that we all come from our different circumstances. We all come from different backgrounds. But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter because it matters what we're doing right now in this moment to progress ourselves forward. So if you know his story, he came up with a very, very abusive father. I've already mentioned to you guys, mine was the exact opposite. Amazing father. He came up where he was, he dealt with racism. I, I never had to deal with that. And there's certain things in life that I will never fully understand in his story. And there's definitely things he would never understand in my story. And this is a topic in and of itself, but there's only one person who understands that that's Christ. And we can talk about that for hours upon hours. But at the end of the day, the message he shares, though, is it doesn't matter where you came from. It matters what you're doing right now. So for anyone out there who feels they, they look at candy, they look at um, 
I don't know, this is, this is a grand example, but they look at um, Elon Musk and they think I can never make a business as successful as him. Statistically, yeah, probably not because that man dedicates his entire life. But let's start on a smaller scale. Maybe it's a local business owner that you think, I don't know how he got that up and running. I want to get something started. I just don't have any good ideas. I talk with friends about this constantly. I have a really good buddy of mine who always tells me, I love the idea of being an entrepreneur. I love the idea of owning my own business and kind of working for myself a little bit, but I don't have any good ideas. And I think that is just, for the lack of a better term, it's baloney. Because mm -hmm. everyone has something inside of their lives that they're able to accomplish. It's just a matter of, it's a matter of the fact if you're actually going to put yourself out there to go and try it. So when you're mm -hmm. afraid to go out there and try it, this is the same message I would share. Get over yourself. Put yourself in a situation where you can actually go and try it. It'll probably fail. I could speak on a gazillion failures I've had since starting my entrepreneurial journey, quote unquote. But if you can step inside of that realm and just get started, it's going to be a whole lot easier. Every time you start something and it fails, you can get going on the next one and the next one and the next one until something finally succeeds because it will, mm -hmm. as long as you put in the time and effort, it will. Right. And as entrepreneurs, we do have failures too. And so if someone is going to do something and then have that failure, we don't want them to think like, oh, I'm a failure, right? Like, oh, I had a failure, right? And I just have to move on, but not I am a failure. I think that's where that mindset shift has to take mm. place too. And I mean, you probably have a lot of experience working with people or hearing kind of those things, um, but that's just what popped in my head as you were talking about that. Yeah. And in some ways I agree with you in some ways I don't, but this is also mm -hmm. very particular. And so I don't suggest this for everyone. For instance, I keep bringing up my wife. If my wife goes through something, she had a rough day. She felt like she wasn't productive. She doesn't feel good. You know, whatever reason why somebody might be having a rougher day. Um, I always try and convince her. We try and go to the gym with each other after work every night. And so we get a little workout in, fun time to hang out with each other and also exercise our bodies and whatnot. And some days she frankly just doesn't want to. And we've all mm -hmm. been there. There's not a single person on earth who hasn't had that day where they go, I do not want to go to the gym right now. And so some days in my head, I'll sit there and tell myself on, on the days where I don't want to go, you're going to be a failure if you don't go. And I know that seem, seems kind of weird. And she tells me I'm weird all the time for this, but in my head, that's what motivates me. And I think, okay, mm -hmm. I am able to go do this. But to your point, Candy, on her side, if I was ever like, Bryn, if you don't go to the gym, you're going to miss out on your goals and you're going to fail the day. She would get completely upset with me and think I was saying the rudest thing on earth. So I think I think the the balance there is figure out who you're talking to. If you're sharing this message mm -hmm. with somebody else or if it's in your personal life, figure out actually what gets you to go drive the car, mm -hmm. to go drive whatever life effort you're in. Figure out what motivates right. you to get going. Perfect. Well, I know, as I mentioned in the bio, you've successfully managed multiple businesses from landscaping to a tech startup. So how do you adapt these principles of get over yourself across these different industries? Another really good question. I like that. And it's kind of a basic answer. And so hopefully nobody will ever get mad at me for sharing the basics. But um, like I already stated, a lot of times in business and life and spiritual life and physical life and whatever area you're trying to improve on, it's the concept of just getting started. And so mm -hmm. when I first started Davis Hoover Lawn Care, I throw this one in there, not because it was a huge success, but because it was probably one of the biggest learning points of my entire life. I was a junior in high school. I knew absolutely nothing. I still know very little and I've learned every single day, but I had a beat up old pickup truck and I had a buddy who had a lawnmower and an edger. And we said, all right, I, I've been cutting grass for my family and for my grandpa for years. He'd been cutting it for his house and his neighbors for a couple of years. And I said, you know what? Let's just go door to door and try and see if we can cut some grass. Hmm. Once again, nothing revolutionary whatsoever about that concept. Been going for years and years but we were able to do it. And so we threw everything in the back of my truck and we go door to door in my hometown. My sales pitch was absolutely horrendous. I would just knock on the door, say, Hey, I, I'm Brandon. And we go to him and hi, just down the road. Uh, we want to cut your grass. We would way undercharge our services. We would spend probably longer periods of time at the house than we needed to, to make it look perfect when they weren't paying for perfect. Just so many funny things that I could tell you inside that experience. But what it taught me was discipline for one, when we go out and knock doors, that's very difficult. You get a lot of no's when you, when you go out and knock on somebody's door. And number two, it taught me the value of earning money for myself. And I think mm -hmm. that's the principle that I took with it because 
and to each their own to, for anybody who's listening out there who doesn't resonate with this teach their own. But I personally feel the value of being able to make the money for myself and then pass it out to my employees. Mm -hmm. And I know some people prefer the career. I have family members who, who prefer that, but the joy I got when I would knock on somebody's door, cut their grass, see the work that I laid out in front of them, see the pristine grass that we cut. And then he would hand me a crisp $20 bill or whatever the price was like that to me just felt so valuable. And I feel like mm -hmm. that's one of the issues at corporate America that a lot of times people will go, they'll clock into their nine to five and they'll go work and they'll work very hard at their jobs, but they don't ever see the direct fruits of their labor. And mm -hmm. so sometimes that psychologically, that can be very difficult because they're not actually sitting back and saying, what difference did I make in the world today? You might've crunched some numbers. You might've done something that drives business, but if you didn't see that direct result, it's sometimes very difficult. And so for me, it is. I can't live my mm -hmm. life like that. And that's why I decided, all right, from Hoover Davis Lawn Care, I did Utah County Christmas lights and I it was simple business in, in and of itself there as well. I knocked on doors and hung Christmas lights, super simple. Um, started Get Over Yourself, which is obviously podcasting and consulting, now working on Interval. Every single one of those, the reason why I've been enjoying it is because I could see the fruit of my labors immediately. And not everyone mm -hmm. will appreciate that, but to me, that's what made the difference. Right. Well, as you've been working with people too, I'm sure that you have seen some like repeating patterns or challenges that, you know, you have noticed in individuals, entrepreneurs, you know, whoever you might be working with. So how can you help them with, you know, this advice that you have again too, to help them with their personal life or their business or, you know, whatever that is, because again, there's just different challenges that we're all facing, um, but I'm sure there are certain ones you see over and over again. Yeah. So as a good example, I feel like a lot of people can relate to this one. One of the big groups of people that I currently work with um, is sales organizations. It's these organizations who day in and day out face constant rejection, whether mm -hmm. it's knocking on somebody's door, doing the cold call, sending out a cold email, you know, all these things inherently as humans, we hate facing rejection. We do not want to put right. ourselves in that, in that position. And so what I try and framework for a lot of these sales reps that are struggling, all of it is a mental game. There's, mm -hmm. I guess for the ones who are going out and knocking on people's doors, there's the physical exhaustion of walking around all day, but for the most part, anyone can get that done. So all of it is just a mental game. So if you could sit there and give yourself the framework of, okay, it doesn't matter what the next person is going to tell me. I am going to get my pitch out though. If they say no mm -hmm. a thousand times and I walk away with no deal closed, the, the goal I'm trying to get in this exact moment is just getting my pitch out. Boom. You accomplish that. Mm -hmm. And so very small goals is what I try and set with people. If you can get just the pitch out or you can get your first line out or you can do some kind of icebreaker, you can make a joke, you can make a new friend when you're trying to sell somebody. Maybe that's the goal mm -hmm. you need to set because it's very hard sometimes when we look at these big numbers, these mandates we have for, throughout our organizations. Okay, this month you have to sell at least $30,000 worth or a million dollars mm -hmm. worth depending where you're working at. And that could be very daunting and it's very hard, right? When you start the month, you think, okay, new month, I'm going to start off great. And then it comes to halfway through the month and you're not even close to your goal. Then it comes to the last couple of weeks and you're not even close to your goal. That is a scary, scary thought. And so if you could just take the time and step back and not be in the moment of, okay, I have to sell X amount of dollars, but I have to just hit a smaller goal. I have to get a conversation. I have to get somebody to pick up the phone. And then obviously mm -hmm. the, the compounding effect, you make those small goals and they eventually build up to bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Right. So it's kind of chunking it down too and not letting, letting it seem so overwhelming. Yes, exactly. So in the bio too, I believe I had mentioned you've worked with like different generations as well too. And so everyone comes from a different perspective from a different generation too. And sometimes, you know, younger people are saying things about the older people and vice versa. And we don't want to generalize as well too, but what are some of the things maybe that you have seen resonate with like these different audiences, the different demographics, um, considering kind of their perspectives in terms of this, get over yourself. Yeah. I want to start that question off. Um, I did missionary work down in Southern Brazil for two years when I first moved down there, I didn't speak a lick of Portuguese. I understood very little of what anyone was telling me. And I had to learn to adopt their language, their culture, and try and be as close to them as I possibly could with keeping my own values. 
And mm-hmm. a lot of times I did this when I was young. I was only 18 at the time when I moved down there. So from 18 to 20, I was trying to serve the people of Brazil, teach them English, teach them about Christ, help them in any way I possibly could. So while living down there, obviously, here's a young punk 18 year old who is just trying to pick everything up. But at the same time, I had so much love for the people. Mm-hmm. Every time I meet a Brazilian here in the US now, it is just a field day. I talk with them for way longer than my wife likes when we're at the grocery store. And the reason for that is just because I developed so much love for them. So mm-hmm. in business, this is my personal opinion. It doesn't matter who you're working with. As long as you can make that connection, you can have that relationship with them. Um, kicking mm-hmm. it back into gear for modern now, um, past the experience I had in Brazil, I work with a lot of individuals. So my software that I'm building out right now, Interval, um, it's an AI receptionist specifically targeted towards the automotive repair industry. So there is plenty of people I connect with that are a little bit younger over that are in their thirties that recently have bought out, um, older generations of business owners in the auto repair industry. They understand where I'm coming from. They understand it's a need. They understand they miss a ton of phone calls, which equals lost revenue to them. It makes Mm -hmm. sense because they're younger and they understand where I'm coming from. They're, they're more easily adaptable to the new technology that's coming out. And so Mm -hmm. those ones, I make that relationship and it's easier to get them on board and to explain the questions and answers. Whereas if I call into some of these other shops that, you know, have somebody behind the counter who's been working there their entire careers, maybe they got the shop from their dad when they were younger. Maybe, maybe they've been working on it since they were younger and it's their own business. It's their baby. Those ones are very hard to adopt. So where I have to adapt to that situation is recognizing, okay, talking to somebody who's a little bit older than me, they'll look at me, whether, whether I'm a budding entrepreneur trying to make something successful they'll still see me as a young guy who has no idea what he's talking about. So I adapt mm. that to my situation. I, I embrace that. And I say, yeah, you definitely know a lot more about this space than me, but this is what it could potentially do to help you. How do you feel about that? They'll obviously have a million concerns, but if you can just kind of workshop it framework by framework and become their friend rather than somebody they see is just uh, somebody trying to make a buck off of them. If you can mm-hmm. create that relationship, it goes an extra mile every single time. Mm-hmm. And I also mentioned in the bio that you generated $3 million of revenue in just four months, which is amazing, right? So how does your mindset, you know, and the get over yourself principle contribute to that success? Yeah, another really good question there. A lot of times, once again, I feel like I've been talking a lot about sales. Sales is not my passion by any means. So I apologize for anyone out there who's thinking this guy only talks about sales, sales, sales. But that organization was something special. We had a lot of hard workers and we had people who had never even done any type of selling, be that door to door, be that um, phone calls, be that business to business, whatever it was. We had a lot of people mm-hmm. who had never done it before. And so what was special to me in a leadership role Um, at the company at the time was helping adopt some of these people who had never done anything like it before and finding a passion for it. And I'm not saying a passion for directly for just sales, but a passion for working hard. And so this team at the time, we were working from our morning meetings were 9 a.m. every day and we work about till 8.30 p.m. And then we all go home Mm -hmm. and we all lived with each other um, and we just made it an amazing time together. And so that's pretty unique for an organization. We all shared apartments. We, we had that camaraderie both mm-hmm. inside the office as well as outside the office, but just seeing some of these people transform for being able to not sell a single thing to being able to sell thousands of dollars worth of our services every single day. Like that's amazing. Mm-hmm. And so when somebody was going through a struggling day, which of course happened, I went through a thousand of them throughout the, throughout the summer when we were doing this within those four months, it was very hard. You would face rejection constantly and that's life. Every single mm-hmm. day you face rejection. And so it was just setting aside that, that frustrating mindset of nobody appreciates me. Nobody wants to buy anything that I have to offer. And it was helping these individuals and myself say, okay, it's not actually you that they don't like. I'm sure if they got to know you, you guys would be best friends. You're a great person. Right. What they don't necessarily like is buying the product. They feel like mm-hmm. they're being sold. So if you could just become a little bit more friendly with them and actually create a relationship like I already alluded to in this episode, create that relationship and sales will follow. And maintain mm-hmm. that relationship. It's not a one and done experience. You can still contact these people. You could still be friends with them. Heck, there's a couple people I, um, I sold 
our products to over the summer. And then I go to on Sunday, I bring my wife and we go have a barbecue with them. Like these mm. were people I actually made a lasting friendship with. And so if you could just set that aside and say, they're not rejecting me, they're rejecting the product or they're, they're they just won't want to be sold. Stop acting like it's all about you and just mm -hmm. go out there and do the hours and put in the time and effort. And I promise you it will work. And it did. And that's how we were able to do it. Mm -hmm. Well, it also sounds like in that method that was being used, I mean, there's mentorship and teamwork, you know, it's not considered competition per se, you know, where I'm not going to help you because if I do, I might not meet my goal either. So I think to me that, like you're saying, it kind of comes back to relationships as well, but it's, it's definitely different than what I've heard in some situations too. So I, I think that that was a great perspective on how they handled that as well, or how you handled that to make sure that everyone felt like they were part of a team and could count on the other people for the support as well. Absolutely. It's like going back to your younger days, what were the most impactful things? At least maybe this is a personal thing as well, but my most impactful learning experiences didn't come in the classroom. They came on the field on the basketball court, the baseball field, mm -hmm. whatever sport you played, because you're learning these team sports, everyone has to play their role or their position correctly in order mm -hmm. for the team to win. And that's the same thing we took into our right. organization. Exactly. We are a team. Mm -hmm. Well, and I'm wondering too, is this anyone ever say to you like, well, that phrase, get over yourself sounds harsh or rude or anything like that too. Like I get the concept, but you know, so what would you say to someone who is like, okay, that is really rude. <laughs> yeah. I get people saying that a lot, a lot of it's online. And so they don't necessarily understand the context. I don't ever mean it in a rude way. Like mm -hmm. candy, you need to get over yourself. You're a horrible person. No, that's never what I'm talking about. <laughs> It's uh, more mm -hmm. so that I'm trying to encourage you. And once again, mm -hmm. some of these phrases and some of these practices I live, um, I've had to adapt. Mm -hmm. And I don't think I even appreciate that until I got married. I've, I've been married a year now. And so everything that I've been talking about in this journey with my wife, I've learned so much in the past year. My previous self, if you would have asked me a year and a half ago, two years ago, um, this same question, I would have said, oh, if uh, they don't appreciate that phrase, they're not my target audience who wants to become better versions of themselves. And that, that was the truth of the matter mm -hmm. because that's who I thought at the time. But now what I'm recognizing is everyone finds discipline, desire, motivation, whatever word you want to use in the dictionary, they find it in their own efforts. So if I come in as Mr. Mm -hmm. Brandon Davis, Mr. I think I know everything in this world and say, Candy, you need to get over yourself. You need to figure your life out. That might not resonate with you. For some people it will. Mm -hmm. If somebody says that to me, I'm kicking it into gear. I'm saying, whoa, they're right. I'm kicking that into gear. But for some people, it just does not make sense. It doesn't feel anything inside of them. There's, there's no fuel for the car. And so adapting that mm -hmm. message to the right person where I say, yes, of course, my message is get over yourself. But if somebody kind of gives me a little, if anyone's watching right now, the little step back and say, I don't know about that. I could say, okay, maybe this isn't the type of motivation or whatever that fuels you. And so I can mm -hmm. kind of mold my, my phraseology around for them because at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter what you're saying to encourage somebody as long as they're actually getting encouraged and they're going to do something to better their mm -hmm. lives or the lives of everyone around them. Right. Well, this has been a great discussion. I know we're coming to the end of the time that we have together. So I would love to ask if someone wants to connect with you, learn more about you, how can they connect with you? Yeah, I appreciate that, Candy. This has been a fun conversation. If anyone wants to find me, you can find me on Instagram at getoveryourself underscore podcast. Basically, any social media, you can find me on that. That's where um, you can contact me as well as if you search up my show on Spotify or wherever you listen to your shows. Um, I always have a transcript that shows how you can contact me on my email and whatnot. So if you have any questions, be happy to answer them. Perfect. Well, thank you, Brandon, for being a guest on my show and talking on this topic. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you, Candy. I appreciate you. And to the listener, if you enjoyed today's topic and you want to hear additional information, you can find access to the exclusive content in the show notes. Thank you for tuning in today. Would you please share this episode with those you know and leave a review on your favorite platform? And if you find our show informative, would you consider being a financial sponsor to help me continue my mission to educate business owners? A link is located in the episode description, and no amount is too small. I'd really appreciate your support. If you are interested in connecting with our guests and receiving the offer they had to share, a link to our resource page is in the show notes. 
Finally, if you have any bookkeeping or payroll needs, reach out to us at 310-534-5577 or contact at abandp.com. My team and I are eager to assist you. Until next time, have a great day. Thank you for listening to Biz Help For You. Please join your host, Candy Messer, again next time. Have a terrific day.